Constitution of the United States of America. By some, he's been called controversial. I'll keep my freedom, I'll keep my guns, try to keep my money and my religion too. Now, now keep in mind that some of my guests have been approached by oh, Homeland Security or FBI saying, oh, uh, why are you going on the Clay Douglas show? My message to those guys, if they're listening this morning, is go get a cup of coffee. Maybe you'll learn something. We both took the same oath, you know, to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I don't recall there being an expiration date on that. I'm going to keep my big B.A., keep my friends the same, keep the government out of my business, and y'all can keep the change. He is the free American, Clay Douglas. We know what we need. We know who to blame. Catch the Free American Hour weekdays at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. I'll keep the USA and y'all can keep the change. For the podcast and more details, visit www.freeamerican.com or catch the podcast by phone by calling 832 999 8621. All right. Yeah, we're approaching a new year. I hope you all had a, a wonderful Christmas out there. And I'm working on another article, and this uh, today's show will be in line with that. You know, most of you know here that I've been fighting the New World Order for 25 years. I blew the whistle on the first Bush administration for being drug smugglers, for bringing the cocaine into this country, for using the CIA and the Mossad, and I put that in my book, Mystery Babylon, the New World Order Unveiled. But I've been writing about this whole New World Order thing for 40 years. I was I told you 40 years ago in a novel that you haven't read yet, because it's still being edited. What we were in for and, and what uh, some of the states, what could happen to some of the states. Then I started publishing the Free American and I published articles by people like Anthony Sutton Eustace Mullins, Anthony Helders, a friend of mine, and it. I, I want to bring up one of the one of the reasons, one of the men that was actually a hero of this country that tried uh, to do the right thing, the same way as Andrew Jackson. I think we. Uh, so this this show I don't have a guest I will take calls, and the uh, the call in numbers are up on my site. But uh, there's some articles up there, stories up there, 
about a talk that I gave here in Tucson, and it was on my book, The New World Order Unveiled, but I was told I couldn't use the word, the word Jew in my speech, or the, or, or the person would, would pull the plug on my speech and wouldn't let me talk. Because just mentioning the word Jew, and I suppose maybe maybe she felt the same about talking about Christians or talking about Muslims. No, no, we don't want to put a label on anybody. We don't want we don't want to offend nobody. Well, sorry about that. I am exposing the enemy. For more than 50 years, patriots have risked life, reputation, and wealth to warn America that enemy insiders were working in secret, dishing out small doses of socialism until one day America would wake up to find we have a Soviet-style one-world government. Gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligent, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no secret is revealed. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solon decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. Confidence that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent. America is like a healthy body and its resistance is threefold. It's patriotism, it's morality, and it's spiritual life. Not talking about any particular religion, although, you know, if you got to live in a country of religious people, a Christian country is the most friendly to that viewpoint, because that's basically what Jesus was, the first rebel that solved the problem that we've got today. How do you fight evil without becoming evil? That's what's happened to the Jews in Israel, and, and the Jews themselves, and the Judeo-Christians out there, and many other Christians out there, are simply used and herded like animals. And they don't want you to know who your enemy is, who the Pharisees were, who the Bolsheviks were, who the neocons are, who planned the you know, new American century, who did that. Many of them were Jews, like Rabbi Dov Zakheim, who supplied the remote control devices that were put in the planes that flew into the World Trade Center. Now, if we can undermine, if the communists can undermine those three areas, patriotism, morality, spiritual life, America will collapse from within. That was Joe Stalin that said that. 
The agenda is grinding America down. This story really begins for me back in the summer of 1992. I got a phone call. Now, the man that's talking here is Curtis Bowers. Uh, from an older gentleman I knew who was a writer. And he asked me if I'd go attend a meeting for him at the University of California, Berkeley. He told me that the Communist Party USA recently split over differences of how to best take America down. Some were wanting to still work toward a violent revolution, while others were wanting to focus their efforts on using public policy to subvert America from the inside. He was curious what they had to say. I mean, after all, the Berlin Wall had just come down, the Soviet Union had dissolved, and the whole world was saying, communism is dead. So why were they meeting, and what were they up to? I was in graduate school at the time, and the whole idea of slipping in undercover to a communist meeting sounded pretty neat, so I decided to go. The first surprise I had was when I walked into the auditorium. I was expecting it to be filled with college radicals, but instead of 50, 60, and 70 year olds, I mean grandparents, professionally dressed with briefcases, and I realized this might be a little more serious than I thought. As the weekend unfolded, I listened carefully as they outlined their plan and agenda and how they were going to infiltrate the institutions of America to influence us in the direction they wanted us to go. To destroy our families, they wanted to promote cohabitation instead of marriage. They wanted to try to get children away from government programs at the earliest age possible. And they also said they'd like to get behind the feminist movement because they felt it had been very successful and making women discontent with marriage and motherhood. To destroy business, they wanted to get behind the environmental movement. And in 1992, the environmental movement was very modest, but they thought it was the only vehicle capable of creating enough regulation and red tape to discourage business growth. And finally, to destroy our culture of religion and morality, they said, if we can get Americans to accept homosexuality, they thought it would begin to extinguish our traditional moral values Americans held. I remember thinking at the time, this plan doesn't seem very realistic. It's not something I'll need to worry about in my lifetime. It was 15 years later, I was appointed by the governor to be a state representative in the legislature. I'd only lived in my district for two years, so I thought it'd be a good idea if I wrote a monthly letter to the editor. Each month I wrote on a different topic. In January 2008, as I was contemplating what to write my letter on, I thought back to the meeting in 1992, and I thought of the goals they'd outlined, and where America was today, and I couldn't believe how successful they had been. I mean, our families were totally disintegrating, the environmental movement had become the most powerful force for destroying our free markets, and hate crimes legislation was being considered in Washington, D.C. that made it a crime to even say anything against the homosexual movement. I realized people needed to know what was going on. After I wrote this letter, within days, people were protesting at the Capitol, it was the feature story on the evening news. Controversial comments of state legislators buzzing tonight. After a freshman lawmaker alleges the communist agenda has infiltrated mainstream America. It's the big story, live at 6. And over 40 letters to the editor had been printed in response to what I'd said. Hey, I just wanted to give you support on your newspaper article. To let them you down. Right. I realized then I'd hit on something. One of the letters written in my defense stated that a book from 1958 had outlined a similar agenda. And this got my attention. The book was The Naked Communist by Cleon Skousen, who had been a former FBI agent. And inside the book, it documented 45 current communist goals from 1958. And as I slowly read through the list, seeing how specific their agenda had been to subvert us on the inside, 
I couldn't believe it. Goal number 28, eliminate prayer in the schools on the grounds that it violates the principle of separation of church and state. Goal number 40, discredit their family as an institution. Encourage promiscuity and easy divorce. Number 17, get control of the schools, use them as transmission belts for socialism, soften the curriculum, get control of teacher associations. Number 24, eliminate all laws governing obscenity, calling them censorship and a violation of free speech and free press. Number 25, a break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography in books, magazines, motion pictures, and TV. Present homosexuality, number 26, and degeneracy and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Goal 2021, infiltrate the press, gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. Goal 27, infiltrate the churches and replace. And nobody seemed to be noticing. For at least the last 50 years, they've been working actively behind the scenes, in the shadows trying to move our people and our culture in a direction that was designed to destroy it. A part of that plan, of course, is to induce the gradual surrender of American sovereignty, piece by piece and step by step, to various international organizations, of which the United Nations is the outstanding but far from the only example. Now here are the aims for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Two, higher and then much higher taxes. Three, an increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher taxes. Four, wild inflation of our currency. Five, government controls of prices, wages, and materials supposedly to combat inflation. Six, greatly increased socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. This is to be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and reach of our domestic government. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state lines. There is a many faceted drive at work to have our state lines eventually mean no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. Eight, the steady advance of federal aid to and control over our educational system, leading to complete federalization of our public education. Nine, a constant hammering into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare, the duties and the absolute necessity of peace, peace always on communist terms, of course, and ten, the consequent willingness of the American people to allow the steps of appeasement by our government which amount to a piecemeal surrender of the rest of the free world and of the United States itself. <laughs> Let's talk about this whole New World Order night plank on the Communist Manifesto, corporate farms and regionalization. And both of those can be covered under, under Agenda 21, Sustainable Development. It is a big idea, a New World Order. In 1989, President Bush kept, said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. A new world, a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges of military. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order, uh, world, uh, world order, international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international order. The beginning. The forces... 
this world, at this moment, are so strong. And they all tend in one day. The new world order. A new world order. A new world order. It is a big idea. The new world order. A new world order. It is a new world order. And I have been reporting on that New World Order, telling you this is exactly what they did, documenting it for the last 20 years since 1994, and actually before. And folks, I need a little bit of backup. I need you to order some books. I've compiled a lot of this information in the Mystery of Babylon, the New World Order Unveiled. And I've taking you into the future in my fiction books. They're adventure fiction. They were written for fun. They were written for entertainment. But they contain elements of the truth in there. As my character goes through the discovery process that I have gone through for the last 24 years. And the opposition to me giving this information to you it's not just me giving you, I'm not making none of this up. You just heard from four presidents who talked about the whole New World Order and people like Kissinger and Tony Blair and, uh, you know, all heads of state talking about the plan for one world government, New World Order, United Nations. Ask the people that uh, what happened in Rhodesia. Well, ask the people what happened when the communists took over in Russia. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Our enemy knew that a new world order with global government was not compatible with the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, and America's sovereignty. Of course, we Americans are going to have to yield up some of our sovereignty. That's going to be, to many, a bitter pill. It would take a lot of courage, a lot of faith, a lot of persuasion. A lot of stupidity. They're going to come along with us on this necessity. Agenda 21, su Sustainable de de Development, the Enemy of American Sovereignty. It's a uh, enemy's mission. Using environmental policies as a tool to put control of the world's both land, economy, and natural resources in the hands of an elite Soviet-style cabal, which some would call communism. Both Republican President George Bush Sr. and Democrat President Bill Clinton signed on to UN Agenda 21, Sustainable Development and supported its policies being implemented throughout every state at the local community level via government and non-governmental organizations. Here is a quick chronology illustrating how the plan for a new world order, aka a global Soviet style government, came to include the USA and how that plan is working. 1987, our common future, UN report authored by the uh, chairman of the World Socialist Party. George Bush, 1992, signed the President United George Nations H. W. Agenda 21. signed on to United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development, on behalf of the USA. UN Agenda 21 was a soft law, not a treaty. It did not require congressional approval. Also, also in 1992, the UN Convention on Biological Diversity created the Wildlands Project. The Wildlands Project is a major component of UN Agenda 21. Environmental groups have effectively created a public image as organizations caring for helpless species and protecting environments. This has allowed them to implement an agenda in America that if fully exposed would be opposed by the majority of the people. In fact, most people supporting these organizations are not aware of their long-term objective, even though it is no secret. Take a look at the Wildlands map. It defines where environmentalists want to take America in the very near future. The areas in red will be off limits to humans. The areas in yellow represent buffer zones, where limited use is allowed primarily to travel to and from populated areas. This is why you're getting the fires, and, and they are driving the independence, they are driving the settlers, they are driving the liberty potential for liberty villages out of the wild lands. And by the way, you won't be able to hunt in the wild lives. The wolves can thrive, deers can thrive, everybody can thrive, but uh, you better buy the genetically modified food 
or else. And by the way, the areas in red cover most of Arizona, a uh, hell of a lot of New Mexico, and uh, all the way up into uh, Idaho, Washington, California. The Sierras are totally red. You might be able to ski there, but you damn sure won't be able to hunt. Yeah, let's check out and see what we got. Let's uh, let's uh, look over here. Uh, yep. Okay. You know, Renegade, I'm getting a little tired of you. You're a fucking idiot. I mean, Liberty Villages should be in every town, it should be in every farm, it should be every ranch, every rancher ought to have a few people living there with him, helping him work it and all that. So you're, you're a fucking idiot, you know, and you make another stupid statement like that, I'm talking about my Liberty Village, you can get, you can get the hell out of my room, I don't even care to deal with dumb assholes, okay? Papa, David, Lady K. Hey, welcome back, Papa Bear. Yeah, I'm permanent opposite now. So, leave and come back anytime you want. Now, let's see what else we got here. Okay, let's go back to this this tape because I, I I'm we're gonna be talking about this. The the people don't want you having this kind of information, folks. They just don't. <laughs> The areas in green are where normal use by humans will be allowed. However, by the environmentalists' own admission, these normal use areas would be restricted. When this plan was first published in 1992, the author, Reed Noss, explained how their agenda would affect the human population. He stated, eventually a wilderness network would dominate a region and thus would itself constitute the matrix, with human habitations being the islands. No one, not even the long-time opponents of the environmental movement, believed such a transforming agenda was possible. Landowners However, would lose their property rights. implemented right. quickly through innocent-sounding programs that most Americans support. Wilderness areas, critical habitat for endangered species, wetlands, roadless areas, national heritage areas, and other restrictive programs are sold to the public as necessary to protect nature or as assurance that Americans will always have a place to escape from the heavily populated cities. More inventive tools and programs, such as conservation easements, smart growth, open space, and green lining, are being promoted as a way to control growth. What all these programs have in common is extinguishing the private property rights of American citizens and transferring the control of the property to elite land trusts or directly to the government. Corporate farms, too. Buying the environmental our land. movement would not be able to implement their agenda without the cooperation of our government at all levels, including state and federal officials and even county commissioners. To help facilitate the environmental goals, the Clinton administration quietly created the GAP Analysis Program, or GAP for short. GAP divides the land into ecosystem regions and identifies the properties not yet under the control of state and federal governments. In other words, private property. These private holdings are then targeted for preservation by government agencies and land trusts through conservation easements, purchase, and condemnation. Although the GAP program has not been completed in all states, the data from this program